super easy, but it, it is supporting the meeting. Um, but easier if, if you put that information in the chat by clicking um, your participant button and then your rename button. Um, next slide. Um, please place all of your questions in the chat um, per usual. Um, we are, um, we keep track of all of the chats um, and track all of the questions and comments that come into them. So it's a really helpful record for us. Um, and don't be shy to um, pop those things just into the chat below. Next slide. So today we are here to um, provide an update to the conversation we had uh, I believe two weeks ago um, about data counts um, and how we are um, expecting all of you to uh, count your data um, and your client counts um, for our, our data tracking purposes. Um, and so I really wanna start off this meeting just by thanking everyone for sticking with, with us throughout this process um, that I know has been sometimes really long and um, sometimes really painfully and frustratingly slow. Um, and I, I want to acknowledge that we haven't been able to answer your, your data questions from two weeks ago up until today. And I know that delay has frustrated a lot of you. Um, so I really want to apologize for that. Um, you know, I think our, our goal here at Measure 110 is to always give you correct answers and correct information. Um, and in order to do that, sometimes we just need a little extra time um, to make sure that we're being thoughtful, that we're following the law, and that we're following um, the, the Oversight and Accountability Council's intent. Um, as we're building this, this brand new program um, with you all, we really are building it in real time and um, working through some of these complicated issues and policies and questions just just takes time. So I, I want to voice that and really um, just express my gratitude for um, the, the grace and the, and the patience that you have all um, shown us. Um, I also want to thank everyone who has submitted a question either during one of our TA sessions or to the Measure 110 inbox. Um, as I mentioned, we have been cataloging and tracking all of the questions um, and we'll be responding to everything that we've received up until this week um, by, by tomorrow, by Friday. So you'll have hopefully um, a, a lot of answers to your questions that have come in um, very, very soon. Um, and so, you know, and I also want to acknowledge that it's thanks to a lot of these thoughtful questions and insights, um, insightful feedback that you all have provided that we're able to perfect the information that we're sharing today um, and feel pretty confident in the answers that we're giving you. Um, I know that some of this information might prompt further questions, um, but I do ask that if you have questions that are really specific to your organization or funding to submit those to the Measure 110 inbox um, so that that gives our staff time to look up the details of your organization, um, what the council has approved you to, um, to do, and give you a really um, personalized answer. Um, of course, the, the caveat there is um, with over 200 organizations, if everyone has a, has a question, um, it just takes us a little bit of time to get through those. Um, please ask those questions, um, but just, just note that we, we are, um, triaging them and cataloging them and answering them um, as, as they come in um, to the best of our ability. Um, we'll be sending out these slides, um, some corresponding FAQs and uh, the data reporting tool by the end of this week. So you'll all have this information in your inbox. And of course, this um, presentation will be recorded and also saved to our website. Um, Finally, I just want to note that yesterday the Oversight and Accountability Council um, voted on some pretty significant changes to the Measure 110 program that will likely affect you all. Um, for those of you who may have missed that meeting, the council voted to offer all grantees the option to extend your grant agreements um, through June of 2020. 
five. <laughs> that sounds like a really long time from now, um, but it is, and that will give you an additional 18 months um, of time and funding to, to do this really important work. Um, and I know that a lot of you probably have a million questions about what that means and, and what that means for your organization, um, but that won't be the focus of today's meeting. Um, and we won't be able to answer any questions about that decision at this time. Um, we are we are writing policy in real time. Um, and in order to be responsive um, to just life that happens and um, the council's decision process along that way. Um, so we'll be sharing more information about um, what that council decision means for all of you um, as, as soon as we have it ready. Um, but with with all of that, um, I want to um, turn it over to the data. So this really is in response to um, the presentation we had two weeks ago about the um, client uh, reporting data and tool. Um, and so I'm gonna turn it over to my colleagues, Emily and Ane, um, who are going to walk you through um, some of the big kind of existential FAQs and a couple flow charts and scenarios that will hopefully um, help everyone kind of um, think about, understand how we're thinking about data collection. Um, and then, you know, if we have some, some of easier questions we can answer in the chat, we'll, we'll get to those. Um, and if not, you know, we, like I said, we're, we're keeping track of them all and we'll make sure we get folks answers um, as soon as we can. Um, so with that, I think I'll uh, can advance the slide and um, turn it over to Emily. And I'll just remind everyone that we will be emailing these slides out to you so they will be in your inbox so you can reference them um, uh, and, and have them at your disposal. Thanks, Kristen. Hi everyone, my name is Ane Tarango. I am with OHA working on Measure 110 data. And as Kristen mentioned, we are going to use this time today to go over pretty notable recurring question that was posed after our first programmatic data session a few weeks ago. Um, and the question being, which clients should be included in the Measure 110 data reports? The answer to that is um, a flowchart. So brand partners should follow the flowchart provided in the next slide to determine if the client should be included in the data reporting. So if we go to the next slide, we can sort of see there is a flowchart here to help you all um, determine whether or not to count a client. And it's, you know, we can start with the first question of does the client either currently use substances or have a, a, a SUD, substance use disorder? If the answer is no, you do not have to include the client in your counting. If yes, we could move on to the following question of um, whether the client receiving services is funded by Measure 110. Um, so if like meaning if the service is funded by Measure 110, um, like for example, peer support, housing, um, harm reduction, et cetera. And if the answer is no, don't include the client. If the answer is yes, move on to the next question of um, if Measure 110 funds were used to provide services to the client. And there's an asterisk here, um, sort of explaining um, ways that Measure 110 funds could be used. So this may include, but is not limited to Measure 110 funded transportation to the service. Um, if Measure 110 provided a, like a facility that the service is being performed in, um, the use of materials paid for by Measure 110, um, services provided by staff funded or partially funded through Measure 110. Um, so if the answer is no, then don't include the client. If yes, then go ahead. If yes to all of the above, go ahead and include the client in the data reporting. And um, if we go to the next slide, um, we do have a slide specifically covering screenings. Um, 
And that is because there is a slight distinction to counting clients who are screened versus using the flowchart to counting clients for the services that were mentioned, like housing, harm reduction, et cetera. Um, and I can explain. So uh, just to level set, screenings are used to help to use to help identify if a person uses substances or potentially has a substance use disorder. Measure 110 funds may be used to provide a screening service that determines the client neither uses substances nor has a substance use disorder. Therefore, um, organizations, burn partners approved to perform screenings should count all clients who are screened, unless no Measure 110 funds are used for the screening. Um, so if we go back, um, Chelsea, to the flow chart quickly, the first question there to delineate who um, to count, um, whether or not a client currently uses substances, or has a substance use disorder for screening only. Um, if Measure 110 funds were used to screen a client and we find out that the client doesn't have a substance use disorder or doesn't use substances, um, then still go ahead and include the client in the count. Um, but for all other services and situations, feel free to, to use the chart as a guide. Um, and now I can pass it over to my colleague, Emily, who can sort of go through um, different scenarios that can help paint a clearer picture. Hi, thanks, Sunny. Um, my name is Emily Pertu. I use she, her pronouns, and I also work in health analytics on Measure 110. And yeah, we have six scenarios that we are going to go through today, and we just want to acknowledge that this is probably not going to cover every single situation out there. Um, and so we're hoping that this can give you um, some insight into how to use the flow chart, but we know that there are probably still going to be some very unique, um, complicated situations. Um, and if you find yourself unable to arrive at an answer using the flow chart, uh, you can always email the Measure 110 team um, and we can provide you some assistance with those specific questions. Um, so let's go through these scenarios. Um, the first one is if an uninsured client with a history of heroin use receives medicated, medication assisted treatment from a burn provider. And so when we say burn provider, we're referring to someone who is providing measure 110 funded services. Um, so if we look at the flow chart, um, the answer to the first box there would be yes. And so that moves us into the second box. And so is the client receiving services funded by Measure 110? So they're going to a, a burn provider, so someone who has Measure 110 funding for that service. So we would say yes to that. And then were any Measure 110 funds used to provide services to this client? Um, since this client is uninsured, we can, and since uh, Measure 110 uh, covers and you're not to charge for these services, we can assume that the Measure 110 funds were used to pay for this individual's treatment. And so we would want you to include this individual in the data report. And so if we look at the rationale, um, the client has a drug use history, is receiving services through um, um, funded through Measure 110 by an approved provider. So this would be someone that we would include in the data report. All right, let's go to the second scenario. All right, so for scenario number two, we have a client who uses substances and lacks transportation, um, and they are given a Measure 110 funded bus pass to access burn services. So if we look at the flow chart, um, yes, we have someone who currently uses substances or has a substance use disorder. And then we see is the client receiving services funded by Measure 110? And so we would say yes to that because they're accessing burn services or Measure 110 funded services. And then were any Measure 110 funds used to provide services to this client? So we know at the very least that Measure 110 funds were used to provide this person with transportation. So we would say that yes, Measure 110 funds were used to help provide services to this client. So we would want to include them in the report. And so if we look at the rationale, um, this client has current drug use and is receiving transportation funded through Measure 110. This client could be counted regardless of the type of Measure 110 funded services received 
or the funding source of those sort of services. So um, to provide a more specific example here, if this individual was seeking SUD treatment and the organization received Measure 110 funding for SUD treatment, if that SUD treatment provider gave this person a bus pass so that they could access those services, we would want to include them in the client count. And that's true even if ultimately Medicaid or a private insurer ended up paying for those SUD treatment services. Just the presence of that Measure 110 funded bus pass means that that organization has provided Measure 110 funds to provide that person with SUD treatment because it's removed that barrier. And so this person has still been impacted by the Measure 110 funds, so we would want to include them in that client count. And while we use bus, um, a bus pass or transportation assistance in this example, you can see how that could be um, interchanged with a lot of other support services, like if child care was paid for for this individual so that they could receive treatment or um, interpretive services, something like that. If a barrier was removed so that this person could receive that treatment, we still want to count them in our overall reporting. Okay, you can go to scenario three. All right, so a client who has never used substances receives mental health counseling services through a provider funded through Measure 110 for SUD treatment counseling services. So if we look at the flow chart, um, that very first box there, does the client either currently use substances or have a substance use disorder? And the answer to both of those questions is no. And so we would not want to include this person in our data reporting. And if we look at the rationale, um, the client does not use drugs, um, does not have a drug use history or a diagnosis of an SUD, and therefore is not eligible, even though the person is receiving services in a program or receiving at least some of its funding through Measure 110. And just as a reminder that mental health care is not an eligible service under Measure 110. All right, we can go to the next slide. All right, scenario four. So a client who uses substances receives SUD treatment through an organization with Measure 110 funding for SUD treatment. Medicaid covers this treatment in full. So if we go through the flow chart, yes, this per person currently uses substances or has a substance use disorder. Um, this client is also receiving services in a Measure 110 funded area. So they're receiving SUD treatment from an organization that was funded for SUD treatment. Um, if we go to the last question in the flow chart though, were any Measure 110 funds used to provide services to this client? And for that, based on the information we have here, we would say no, because it looks like Medicaid has covered all of this person's treatment and this isn't a situation like we discussed earlier with the bus pass where this client has some sort of support services that are being funded through Measure 110. So we would not include this person in the report. And if we look at the rationale provided, um, while this client has current substance use and is receiving care through a burn provider, there is no indication that the client is receiving supports or services that are funded through Measure 110 the client would be eligible to be counted if or when this person begins receiving support services funded through Measure 110. Or if this person was, you know, began to receive additional services that weren't covered by Medicaid, additional treatment, then we would also want to um, include this person in the Measure 110 group. Um, but since those things aren't currently true in this scenario, we would not include them. All right, you can go to scenario five. Okay, so in this situation, a client with uh, a substance use disorder receives SUD treatment from an SUD treatment provider that was authorized and funded under Measure 110 for harm reduction only. This client does not need or receive harm reduction services. And so if we go through the flow chart, the first box, yes, this person um, currently uses substances or has a substance use disorder. Um, for the second question, is the client receiving services funded through Measure 110? So in this situation, we would say no, because this client is receiving SUD treatment 
from a provider that was only funded for harm reduction. And this client is not participating in those harm reduction services. So we would not include them in the report. And looking at the rationale, uh, while the client has a substance use disorder and is receiving SUD treatment from a burn provider, the client is not receiving services in the specific Measure 110 funded area, which was harm reduction. Uh, Measure 110 funds have not been used to support this client and so is not eligible to be counted. All right, and our last scenario, scenario number six, is that a client who uses substances receives SUD treatment through an organization with Measure 110 funding for SUD treatment in a building paid for through a Measure 110 grant. And in this situation, the client's private insurance covered the treatment costs. So this is a little unique, but if we go through the flowchart, um, the person for that first box there, yes, they currently use substances or have a substance use disorder. They are receiving services in an area funded through Measure 110. So they're receiving SUD treatment from a provider who was funded for SUD treatment. And for the last question, were any Measure 110 funds used to provide services to the client? So even though this person had private insurance to cover the treatment costs, they were still impacted and able to receive those services because of the facility that was funded through Measure 110. So we would want to say yes to this question and include them in the data report. And if we look at the rationale, while indirectly the services provided to the client were made possible through a Measure 110 funding uh, for the facility in which services were delivered. And so for now, we would like y'all to in, uh, include these clients in your data reports and in your client counts. Um, but just we want to acknowledge that this may change in future reporting periods. Um, at this point in time, we really want to um, take into account the expansion of services and infrastructure that Measure 110 has allowed. Um, we're aware that it might not be appropriate to count these individuals indefinitely um, because they're seen in the facility funded through Measure 110. Um, but for right now, we would like you to include them in your data report. Um, so that's our last scenario. I'm gonna turn it back over to Kristen and she can wrap up and we can see if we can address any comments or questions that have been provided in the chat. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Emily and Ane for that presentation. Um, again, we will make sure that we send these slides, um, the link to the online reporting tool and uh, a copy of FAQs to all of you um, by the end of this week so that you can um, spend a little bit more time and uh, with it and um, be able to digest it um, at your at your own pace or share it with others in your organization. Um, I do want to address a few themes that I'm noticing in the chat. Um, and the first is about reporting um, on information, um, reporting confidential client information. So the way that we are currently um, going to be asking you to report is really de-identified information. So we're not asking for names or patient identifiers. Um, our initial um, data reporting kind of template or tool um, is really going to be the number of clients you served and um, some basic client demographic. And if you aren't able to, to collect those basic client demographics because of the nature of what you're doing, whether it's street outreach, whether it's harm reduction, we know that those um, services are um, are different and are um, can be sensitive, and um, you know we want you to do your best. Um, and if it's just not feasible to collect that information, that's fine. We are including um, a narrative section on our data on on your data reporting template and tool where you can talk about a little bit about maybe projects or successes or barriers um, towards providing services to capture some of that more qualitative information. But we are not asking you to report any 
any client names, any client identifiers, any confidential patient um, information uh, at this time. Um, I also um, want to, again, just kind of acknowledge, um, again, kind of a theme I'm noticing in the chat around, um, you know, some of the services that, that you have been providing and, you know, you have maybe established clients or um, models of outreach um, and that work for you and work for your organization. And we want you to continue to, um, to do those things. So you don't have to have a client who comes in for a screening in order to receive a service. There really is no wrong door approach here. So um, if you're, if you're funded to provide harm reduction services, you don't have to have, um, a, a formal screening and assessment in order for a client to access those services. Um, you can continue your, your outreach. Um, you can continue to provide those services and, you know, maybe the goal over time is that you can establish trust with some of your clients and, and kind of lead to some of those other conversations around screening or assessment or treatment. Um, but you know, you're, you, you all are the experts and the providers in that field and you know, your communities and you know, your clients. Um, and so we're not, we're not expecting any kind of linear progression, um, through, through the burn or, or gateways in order to access this, these services. Um, you know, we want them to be, continue to be truly low barrier, no barrier services, um, and, and continue the work that you do. Um, uh, and I do want to acknowledge that that Larry, you have your hand up. Um, but if if I'm not sure if you can put a question in the chat, I don't have the um, the, the piloting authority, I think, to be able to unmute you. Um, um, or you can send us an email um, after the chat, or maybe someone more more tech savvy than me can figure out how to un unmute you. But in the the Zoom Gov. Um, platform. Sometimes it's a little, a little tricky. Um, and, and I'll, I'll respond also to um, a question that, that is in the chat from Dina. Um, if you asked if we house an individual that is not referred by a burn partner, but are served by measure 110 funds, do we collect the data? Um, and, and the answer to that question is, is yes. Um, again, because, you know, the, we don't expect kind of any referrals necessarily um, to happen. People can access your services however they come to you. Um, but if they are served by Measure 110 funds, then you should account for them, kind of regardless of, of how they came to your organization for services. And again, I'll just name that this um, presentation is being recorded. It will be uploaded to our website and the slides, um, FAQs and reporting tools will be emailed out to all of you. Um, We're also um, going to be emailing you out uh, a little bit of information um, about the council's decision yesterday. Um, for those of you who may be joined a little late, um, the Oversight and Accountability Council yesterday voted to extend the grant um, to give to give you all the option to extend your grant agreements um, until through June of 2025 um, to give you all additional time and additional funding um, to be able to do these services um, and this work. And I don't have all of that information. Um, yet about what that looks like or what that process will be. Um, but we we will send out at least what was presented and what was voted on um, so that everyone everyone has that information uh, and we will address it in future um, sessions.
Um, Robert asked a, a good question in the chat um, about kind of the objectives of data collection and what improvements we're looking for. Um, and um, we are uh, and kind of, you know, what, what we will use to try to measure success, uh, which is a good question. Um, we are, I think, I think as many of you know, phasing in our approach to collecting data. Um, so we really, at the beginning, want to know just how many people are being served um, and if there are any um, barriers, um, it initially identify barriers towards accessing services. Um, eventually, we will phase in a little bit more um, comprehensive um, information. Again, it'll still be aggregated and be identified. Um, data about who really is being served by Measure 110. And, uh, and then we'll start phasing in some outcomes data. Those um, haven't been identified yet, um, but the goal really is eventually to be able to look at this program and see if, if we are serving, um, if we are reaching um, communities who have been harmed most by the war on drugs and if um, people are able to access services without barriers, without delays, um, and, and eventually we'll get there. But we are, we are really starting with small steps and that is just the number of clients served and um, some demographic data. Um, to answer a few more a few more questions that have come in, um, yes, we will be sending out more information about the um, council's decision to um, offer extensions to your grant agreements. We don't have a lot of information about that yet, since the decision was made uh, yesterday evening. Um, but we will share more information about what that might look like soon. Um, I think it's it's still a few months off, um, so I just want to set expectations that um, it's coming, but we don't have anything in concrete um, yet. This is this is the fun of writing policy in real time um, to respond to um, just respond to life. Um, and we are still working on policies. Um, and procedures for the 12 prescribed areas. Um, to answer another question from, from the chat, um, those are have been written and are in the review process. So we hope to have those to you all soon. Um, and as a reminder, you don't have to have policies and procedures um, to um, address how you will serve the, the 12 policy areas. Um, in the chapter 944 rules until 90 days from when we send those out. So the clock is not ticking on you. It is it is definitely still ticking on us. And um, we appreciate um, your, your patience again as we just get those get those all done. Our goal is to give you, I believe, all 12 at once. Um, so it's a it's just a, a lot of review process and making sure that we're being thoughtful um, in in creating those templates for you all. And yes, you will you will get a reporting form um, to collect all of this data that will be sent out um, on Friday, along with some information um, and guides and how to use it. And I think we'll we'll likely have another um, maybe session to walk through that tool, um, as the first report is not due until January fifteenth. Um,
Um, look at these questions and see if there are any that jump out at me. Um, I have one question, kind of about a scenario um, that we can we can talk through. Um, if a client has Medicaid, but is seen by a provider whose FTE was funded through the burn, do their services count? Um, and to answer that question, yes, they should be counted if they're seen by a measure one time funded provider. Um, and I think that kind of you goes down to this third um, box is were any measure one time funds used to provide services to that client. Um, that provider does not, you know, that provider can see any any clients. They're not limited to just burn clients or measure one ten funded clients or Medicaid clients. Um, our expectation is is you know that if you can bill Medicaid for a service, that you do that first, and then kind of use measure one ten um, to to fund any services that can be billed um, in order to continue to provide clients um, access to treatment. Hope that answered that question, but if it doesn't, please please uh, send us an email to the measure one time. Um, have another scenario. Um, if I refer a peer, if I refer a client to a burn partner for service, do I have to track if that partner gave them that service or is it just up um, to that agency to report from them on forward? And that's a, that's a good question. Um, we're expecting that the um, partner providing the services um, reports on that client. Um, if you provide a referral, um, we're not expecting you to to follow through kind of and, and track that that client through the through the burn. Um, Larry, I see your question. Um, and it 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 asks, um, our harm reduction modality allows us to provide funding for individuals who are not currently using substances. Um, as a reentry program, our targeted focus is not to return to jail or prison for participants. With this in mind, we provide financial assistance in our harm reduction, so most clients will be counted. And those, um, Clients that don't receive funds but participate are counted as well. And how should those be viewed in uh, the reporting? So um, you're correct um, in that um, those clients that you provide financial assistance to um, should be counted. Um, and those not receiving funds but participate are counting as well. You know, I think um, you could view that as, you know, if if clients are participating in a in a program but not receiving direct assistance, whether that's interacting with your peers, um, coming to you for for, for counseling or, or any other kind of um, any other kind of service or participation, you can count those clients as well. They don't have to be receiving a direct um, either financial assistance, a direct um, tangible thing uh, in order to be counted. If, if they're receiving, I think, any kind of aspect of your programming, you can count them um, since your programming is, is being funded by Measure 110. Um, and just briefly to, to jump back to the, the policy and procedures question, if um, you do have your own policies and procedures that address those 12 um, topics, you are, you are free to send those to the Measure 110 inbox. 
um, and and we can accept your own policies and procedures as well. So um, you don't need to recreate what you're already doing. If you have something, um, we're we're just offering templates for for folks who might not have um, anything yet. It looks like we have um, about 15 more minutes. Um, so if you do have additional questions, um, please, please feel free to put them in the chat or email the measure 110 inbox. Um, again, we'll get, I think, a lot of questions that are currently sitting in the inbox out to you all um, uh, today and tomorrow. And we will be sending out um, this presentation, the reporting tool, um, some instructions and FAQs um, as well. Um, we'll probably have a separate email about the council's decision. Um, so I'm, I'm sorry for what will probably feel like a lot of emails <laughs> coming at you at once, but hopefully they contain um, welcome and helpful information um and again if things aren't clear if you do have um organization specific questions um please please do send those our way that's that is what we're here for um we appreciate all of your patience as we solve these puzzles um together uh we truly sometimes don't know what we don't know uh until until you bring it up and so we just appreciate um your willingness to um, flag issues, raise things that um, aren't working um, and, and work with us. Um, and Renee, I see your hand is up and I'm sorry, I don't have the, I haven't figured out how to um, unmute people on the ZoomGov account when we're in kind of presentation mode, but if you could put your question in the chat or um, send us an email, I can make sure we, we answer it. I need to, I think, maybe take a little a Zoom, another Zoom lesson um, to see if we can figure that out um, in the future. Oh, apparently our chat function got turned off. Is that is that true? I don't know how to fix that. Let me just I just got a text saying someone tried to send a chat and it didn't go through. 
oh, it's fixed. Okay. I was wondering. I was like, we can't have answered all of your questions. There's no way. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I don't know. It's probably me or something. Um, so we have a have a question about about billing um, for services that aren't covered um, by by other payers, um, and I think I'm gonna just put a pin in that question and, and follow up off offline if that's okay, Angela. Um, the twelve service areas for the policies and procedures um, can be found. Um, in the chapter 944 rules and also on the provider uh, website. And so I am going to drop a link to that document into the chat um, for everyone to see all of those areas. Um, there's another question about if we are um, creating a, a standard screening tool or template. Um, and I believe at this at this point, we are not um, kind of recognizing that um, some folks might have tools, and this maybe is a good topic for a future TA session. Um, that that we can take back to our team. Um, I think right now our our focus is making sure that we get the um, policy and procedure templates out to you all. Um, but I think we're we're happy to talk through a, a standardized um, form in the future. Um, and Kathy, I will I will follow up with you. Okay. Um, another, another question in the chat, which I think, um, is actually scenario four or five, if we could maybe go to that slide. Oh, sorry, scenario four or five, <laughs> not slide four or five. <laughs> uh, maybe it's five, six. <laughs> Thanks, Emily. <laughs> okay, so the, the question is, um, if we have a client that receives harm reduction through another grant, but receives services from a measure one time funded building, do we report them in our data collection? So under, under this uh, flowchart example, um, while indirectly um, the services are provided, um, made possible through Measure 110 funding um, for the facility in which the services are being delivered. Um, so for now, um, we're asking um, providers to count any clients who receive services at a Measure 110 funded facility, um, but in future reporting periods, um, that may change. I think we want to, um, you know, our goal is really to capture what is made possible um, 
by measure 110 that perhaps wasn't um, as possible or um, wasn't wasn't in place before um, this funding. And so for now, um, you would count those um, clients in your data. Um, I just want to name that there are about five minutes left. Um, so um, if you do have questions, again, please um, put them, send them our way, uh, put them in the chat or in our inbox, and we will um, make sure that we get back to you. Um, an ETA on the policies and procedures templates. Um, I, I think that they're, they're nearing the last stages of um, our process. I do believe the council has to vote on them. Um, and so uh, that, will, that will be an indication that they're very close um, is when that, that, that meeting happens. Um, but we're working, working to get them, get them done as soon as possible. We um, really appreciate everyone just being patient. Um, we want to be try to be thoughtful um, and and provide templates that are helpful um, and really usable. So it's it's just taking a little bit of time to to work through that um, and make sure that that we're creating a. a the templates that that everyone um, could use um, should you not have have your own in place already. Um, and each provider will need their own set of policies and procedures. Um, so it's not at the the burn level; it's at the provider level. All right, with about a minute or so left, um, I just, again, want to express, uh, oh goodness, I can't talk anymore, express my um, gratitude for everyone being here um, and for all of the thoughtful questions and feedback that really got us to um, this point to today. Um, we will be sending out all of this information um, and posting it, the link to today's presentation um, on our website so you can use it as a reference um, going forward. 
Um, uh, I, I think I'm, I'm now apologizing for probably sending you a lot of information in the next two days, um, but we will be getting you all of this um, as well as answers to your questions and some, some just the announcement about um, the OAC's decision yesterday. Um, so keep an eye out for all of those. Um, really appreciate everyone's time this morning. Um, and I hope you all have a um, wonderful rest of your uh, Thursday and the rest of your week. Um, thank you. Thank you all just again so much. Um, being a part of this, this process has been um, really meaningful, I think, for a lot of us here on the Measure 110 team. And we're just so grateful um, that you all want to be here and a part of it with us. Um, so thank you. Um, and it is 10. So I'm sure you all have places to be. Um, and uh, we will talk to you all again soon. Thanks.